Part two. Part C point two. Formula for multi-level caches. <clears throat> In this part, we will derive the formula calculating the average memory access time for multi-level cache system. Yeah. It is not very hard. Yeah, pretty straightforward. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> In when we derive the formula, we just look at the two-level cache system. Yeah. Three level we can use the similar way. Yeah. But for us, it's good enough to understand the two level you know, two level cache system. Yeah. Alright, so how to derive the formula? Let's use a simple diagram. Start from CPU then level one cache, level two cache, and a main memory. So then we need to, you know, transfer data between two other JSON media, you know, let's say memory, yeah, because they are special type of memories. Yeah. All right. Between CPU and a level one cache, then we, you know, we have some certain numbers. Yeah, between level one, level two, then we have you know hit time, miss rate. So those numbers, you know, we need to use. Then level two and the main memory also hit time, miss rate, miss penalties. You know things like that. Now. We assume level one cache has this hit time T1 hit. The miss rate is R1. The miss penalty P1. The miss penalty we understand this way. After we leave L1 cache, yeah, because we cannot find the requested cache block, so we have to you know, get out of the this small system, right? Yeah. So this small system. So we need to pay that P1 penalty. Yeah. All right. So for L2 cache, it has its own T2 hit time. Yeah. And it has its own R2 miss rate and P2 penalty. Now we need to connect all these numbers to get the overall average memory access time. Yeah. We still use our original average memory access time. First, we apply it on this first circle. Yeah. It only contains L1 cache and the CPU, that smaller system first. So we have this formula. T average equals T1 hit plus miss rate R1 times P1 penalty. Penalty with respect to system L1 cache system. Yeah. So when you get out of the L1 cache, you need to get data from the remaining part of the system. How much time do you need? So that's the P1 system. All right. Next, what is P1? Can we represent P1 in more details? Yeah. So that's the next question. So in order to represent P1, we need to look at this second circle. We need to consider how much time do we need to get a requested cache block from the second circle. That's the P1 time. So we treat P1 as the average memory access time from the second red circle. So we can write its formula. P1 equals 
T2 head time plus R2 miss rate times P2 penalty, cash penalty. P2, we know, that's easy, right? So you get data from main memory, you know, and put it back to L2 cache. That's P2. So we do not need further explanation for P2. Yeah. All right. Now we can combine the first two formula because the P1 representation can we can use substitution in the first formula. So we can get one longer formula, this version. T average of the whole system equals T1 head time times L1 miss rate times parenthesis L2 head time plus R2 times P2. So this is our final formula for this L2 level cache system. Our final formula, this two level cache system. All right. So next, let us consider another two concepts, local miss rate and a global miss rate within this two level cache system. So we have these concepts we can understand. All right. So look at the local miss rate first. What is the local miss rate? Yeah, from this name, you can guess, you know, pretty straightforward, the local miss rate. The first level local miss rate, R1. So with respect to R1 cache part, it's local, yeah. The number of misses over the number of memory accesses by its definition. So the pretty straightforward R1 miss rate, okay, yeah. All right, so that's, that's easy, yeah. R2 miss rate, second level local miss rate, still the same definition. How many cache misses with respect to R level two cache? You have that number. And how many requested, how many requests send to L2 cache? So you, you have those two numbers. You take the ratio, you get L2, local miss rate. Then after that, we have global miss rate concept, global miss rate. So then the global, one level global miss rate, one level, so that means if you do not use the level two cache, you only have one level, your global miss rate, what's your global miss rate, right? So that's the G1, but that G1 happens to be R1, yeah? R1, because if you remove L2 cache, your G1 and R1 are the same, right? Yeah. Yeah. Even, even you put the L2 cache in, but if we only look at the one level, so G1 and R1, the same. Yeah. Then, G2, this time you need to consider two level global miss rate. Two level global miss. How do we understand the two level global miss rate? All right, so we treat these two circles, two levels, as one integral cache part, one integral. We do not separate them, one integral. Then, what is the overall miss rate, okay? First, we need to consider how many requests do we send to this overall system block? How many requests do we send it? That total number of memory requests we put at a denominator. Then, how many misses do we have? Yeah, the misses we have to go to main memory to get those cache blocks. So, how many misses out of this integral cache block? Okay, yeah, cache, you know, 
unit, yeah. so whatever you know, you call cash system, you call yeah. Then the ratio of those two numbers, that's the G two. Yeah. So you can see that G two equals R one times R two. The product of two local miss rates. Why is that? Yeah. Although it is simple, it is simple. But if you cannot see why this is the formula, I can use next slide to explain easily. Yeah. So this slide. So we try to understand. So R one based on the definition, R one equals. L1 misses over L1 requests. CPU send the total number of L1 re requests to L1, right? So L1 requests. Then L1 misses. Yeah. Misses get out of L1. So you cannot find, so you have to go to L2. Alright. Then R2 by its definition, L2 misses over L2 requests. That's definition. All right, so now, G2, so what is G2? Yeah. G2, so we treat the G2, the whole system, right? The whole system. Yeah. All right. Whole system, when you get to that integral system, when you get to that integral new system, you send L1 requests, right? Yeah, requests get into that whole system integral system, that's the L1 request at the denominator. When you get out of the whole integral system, how many misses? L2 misses, right? Yeah, so by, by the, you know, this diagram, you can see that's the definition of G2, global, misses, uh, miss rate. Then we can see these two numbers are the same. L1 misses equals L2 requests. No. By our natural understanding, L1 misses. So you get out of L1 cache, you couldn't find those misses in L1 cache. You have to request them in L2 cache. So that's why these two numbers are the same. Okay? Yeah. Then if we multiply R1 and R2, we know L1 misses, L2 requests cancel out. So then result. So you get G2 equals R1 times R2. That's simple. So that's simple. All right. So that's the uh, C.2, our second video of this part. All right.